Hello Internet, uh, coming to you from Brooklyn. Uh, just a couple of words on the announcement from the European Union. Uh, today they agreed that they're going to start accession negotiations with Ukraine and Moldova and that they have accepted candidate status for Georgia and are going to be clarifying the conditions for Bosnian candidacy. So the candidacy of Bosnia and Herzegovina. Just a couple of words on this. This is actually a big deal. It's been in the works for a while. It's been one of those things where like, it's a political hot potato in some ways, but it's also a foregone conclusion in others. And the fact that they've finally pulled the trigger is good. It means that, first off, the future of the European Union is a little bit clearer. Uh, we know where they're going. Uh, it also means that the countries in question now have clear goals in terms of both domestic development and of uh, trajectory they need to be on in order to become more shall we say, high-functioning uh, democracies, right? So this is all good. Uh, also, it paves the way for greater regulatory convergence in the continent, um, which is simplifies trade. It makes uh, doing all sorts of business around the continent a lot easier. The other thing that this does is it creates a lot of problems. And the first problem we've already seen so Hungary has been a bad player essentially since uh, Viktor Orban's uh, government took over. In fact, frankly, the degree to which they have uh, eroded democratic institutions in Hungary has been atrocious. They have uh, changed the constitution, among other things, <laughs> changing the stated borders of Hungary to include parts of Romania and Slovakia. I don't understand how that just doesn't call for some kind of slapping around, right? They've also undermined uh, the courts, they've undermined the election system, they've uh, essentially eradicated free journalism in the country. So they've been a bad player for a long time. What's happened here is because they've been a bad player, they've been uh, excluded from various EU funds, like basically they've been told you can't have this money until you fix certain things, right? This is fine. Honestly, they should have activated Article 7 of the Treaty of the European Union a long time ago uh, to exclude them from the European Union until they, like entirely, until they've gotten that worked up. However, uh, as part of getting the agreement of all of the EU member states for this opening of, of negotiations with Ukraine and Moldova, they basically needed to bribe Orban. What they did was they unlocked various funds uh, that were, had been closed off to Hungary. And what this does, it sets a precedent for future wannabe dictators in the EU to essentially say, well, you know, if you want this thing to happen, you're going to have to, like, pay us off. That's really bad. Another thing that is bad here is that the Hungary didn't say yes. They just kind of quietly walked out and just made, you know, didn't say no. That was what the bribe bought, right? But that, but that starts to undermine the uh, concept of, <clears throat> of EU solidarity, which at the moment is a little bit on thin ice. It needs to be uh, kind of fixed a bit. So that's something where uh, this might cost us in the long term. Another thing is when the EU lasted its uh, enlargement, it in included some countries that were on, shall we say, somewhat shaky ground, both politically and uh, economically, right? And there were mistakes were made. They were eager, the European Union was eager to expand, which was somewhat reasonable, but they didn't quite do their homework as well as necessary. So hopefully they'll do better this time, get uh, their ducks in a row before admitting these countries. And just to be clear, like we're not talking about 
Poland here. We're not talking about like Hungary. You know, we're not talking about countries that are uh, have um, clear, clearly defined borders and, uh, and no wars going on. Like both Moldova and Ukraine are partially occupied by the Russian Federation at the moment, and that's not going to change. Like, at least not in the short term, unless the EU does something to actively kick them out. And kicking the Russians out of Transnistria would be a great thing, but it might come at some complexity and cost, right? And kicking them out of Ukraine, well, as you've seen, that's taken two years and we're still not done, right? U Ukrainians have put up one hell of a fight. They're gonna keep fighting. They're doing a great job, but they're not there yet. So, uh, we're going to need to see the EU um, put in a lot more support than they previously have and that might be a political challenge that's uh, going to be difficult to wrangle, shall we say. So maybe one more point on this. When we're talking about the expansion of the EU, like it's possible for countries like Russia, for instance, and don't get me wrong, this announcement puts amazing political pressure on Russia. But uh, this can be read the wrong way by some people, and it will be, right? And, you know, they'll think of it as European uh, expansionism, uh, some, some kind of neo-colonialism, but that's not what's going on here. None of the countries that have been added to this um, set, uh, so Ukraine, Moldova, uh, Georgia uh, as a candidate country and, and Bosnia and Herzegovina as, as a country that wants to join uh, but isn't quite ready yet. Um, none of those countries is being forced to join. It isn't like Russia invading Ukraine. This is, this is independent, sovereign countries making a political choice, their own choice, to join uh, what is essentially the most powerful economic bloc in the world. Uh, that is an amazing thing, but it's also like not without some level of complexity. And we need to be careful that in all of this, we don't end up seeing a big bounce in nationalism. We kind of saw that in Poland until the last election. Uh, it didn't go really well for Poland, and so thankfully they're off that wagon for now. Uh, the Netherlands just elected uh, Gert Wilders' uh, party in a big way, which is an indication of more xenophobia and, and such. And like, you know, Slovakia has a complete asset as a prime minister at the moment. So, you know, you know we need to be careful. They, the European Union needs to tread lightly uh, and make sure that they explain really well to everybody involved what's at stake here. Because this is a good thing, but it's entirely possible uh, for this to turn into a bad thing if it isn't done well. That's all for now. Uh, cheers.